Hi, everybody. It's Russ from My Hammers 11. I hope you're all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and putting the bell icon, clicking that so you're notified of any time we put on new videos. We have interviews going up daily. Sometimes, you lucky buggers, you get two in a day. Um, loads of great guests coming up. We're rapidly getting to our 50th guest, which is awesome because the channel's only been live for like three weeks. Um, we have some great guests coming up, including today's guest. Um, he was one of the original um, New York Hammers. He's now living in Vegas. West Ham in Vegas is his, uh, is his Twitter. It's, it's John Black. Hi, John. How are you, man? Uh, afternoon, Russ, or evening. Is yeah, evening here, really afternoon good. over there. Yeah, it's bloody hot, we can see. Yeah, no problem, yeah. We know it's <laughs> <laughs> How are you? How's things over there? I know, like, very, uh, apart from... We've got some obviously. rioting going yeah, on. Yeah, apart from the rioting, um, obviously. And uh, we, the strip opens up again on f uh, midnight Thursday. Oh, wow. So, uh, don't know how that's going to go. No. Um, I'm quite happy to let others be the lab rat. Yeah. But um, it's... Uh, They've, they've said, okay, we're going to open up. Brighton Mines and Mine have said they can open up. So it's uh, the town's returning to somewhat normal. It's yeah. been closed here. It's very odd. Um, yeah. It's kind of apocalyptic. People actually got used to it being closed. Yeah. But then yeah. it is odd. And, but they've, they're saying they're opening up their, you know, social distancing, all that, how they're going to enforce that with someone 10 beers deep, I'll never know, yeah. but um, they're going to give it a go. So yeah. um, We'll see what we get. And it's like football as well, isn't it? It's weird because like we've, yeah. we haven't had football. I mean, you know, we've had David Moyes has got the longest unbeaten West Ham streak, I think, <laughs> in modern history, which is, you know, an accolade to behold. But it's weird. Now, like, football's starting. Yeah, I'm excited, but part of me's not because part of me is, like, thinking, oh, I quite enjoyed not losing and and all that stuff but you know it is what it is and you know we and we can we can roll the dice and see what happens but um but you know that's the whole idea back. exactly i mean that's the whole idea of this channel yeah. really it was out of sheer boredom of not having west ham and actually thinking you know there's loads of people out there who who have who are probably bored as well but also have ma great, great memories of west ham which need to be recorded for prosperity you know and that's the idea we're interviewing loads of people all over the world um i think yeah i think technically you're our furthest away from from uh from london stadium at the moment so you're, you're winning well yeah. done yeah. um i used to be the guy but i would probably be one of the closest to upton park if we'd yeah done this. so i gather so i all gather right. yeah so in, the, gone, in the early 80s <laughs> yeah so you've gone one way to but, the other the other extreme yeah yeah so so obviously so for you, John, you know, you know, obviously you've been, as you said, a West Ham fan, you, you live you know, very close to the ground. What was your earliest memory of, of, of supporting West Ham? Well, it's actually one of my, my earliest childhood memory was mm. the FA Cup final in 1980. Yeah. I remember sitting there watching it with my nan and my aunt and my brother was a, my brother's a baby and um, my aunt screaming, oh, we've scored and my nan telling her to be quiet because my brother was asleep and that's the only thing I can remember about it other than you know that we won and everything I still got my granddad's program wow. um and then I went uh 81 and I I I, I don't remember I don't remember the game as much I remember seeing the pitch yeah and I mean I mean I remember being scared of the police horses and um that, that sort of thing. It's just the occasion of it, yeah. the strangeness of going. And then, you know, I, I, I would go, I'll get to go for my birthday, you know, a couple of other treats, you know. But then the first season I actually started, I went to every home game. It was 85, 86. Oh, not, not bad year to start. No, bad year to no. Start. Um, I mean, I was eight, nine at the time. Right. So... I mean, if I, I always say if I was my age back then, I'd have probably drank myself to death in, in celebration, you know. But, um, yeah, I always remember that sort of Phil Parks cutting that Darth Vader figure in goal. We used to stand right at the front of the North Bank on the first barrier, sure. right behind the goal. And my eye line was just underneath the crossbar. <laughs> and I had that view until they knocked it down. And yeah. uh yeah, I mean, but the most vivid memory I've had, the clearest West Ham memory, was John Lard talking to everyone um, on the pitch of the Ipswich game. Mm. And um, Frank McAvenny scoring. And then uh, it, my West Ham, after that, my West Ham went a bit fuzzy because my granddad died. Yeah. And um, my dad's a northerner, he's a Middlesbrough supporter. Sure. So, and a horse racing man. 
So he never really, he's, he's, a, he's fanatical football, but he always worked on Saturday because he was a football uh, a fruit trader. So they would take all the deliveries. So I, I, I had to wait until I was a little bit older to go with my mates. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then um, started going again regularly in about 89. I still go to the odd game, like a mate's dad would take yeah, you yeah. for going for his birthday and stuff. And then, um, yeah, that, that, it's the strangest one. That, the two biggest ones of male memories are at the 80 Cup final and, and the 85 86 season. And then, yeah. you know, as you get into an adult, I mean, the memories are quite hazy because they're going to start and going to the pub. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, I've, one of my most vivid memories of West Ham was being on the north bank of the hill uh, on Hillsborough Disaster Day. Yeah, and that will never leave me because you know you had the the guys there with the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this guy used to drive everyone mad. He used to stand about ten yards behind, him and he'd be commentating on the other games going on <laughs> when you're watching a game. And, and I was a kid, so I didn't really. And then he said there'd been a riot at the FA Cup semi final. And, you know, all the fans are spilling onto the pitch. And um, he sort of said that, and then Southampton scored. So everyone's kind of a bit distracted, and Southampton scored. And he was, and when I've I've still got the programme, I look back, and there's a little known name on the back of the programme who actually scored that day. It was Alan Shearer. Oh, I've heard of him, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it was, some people are aware of his work, but yeah. So it's one of the vivid memories of the terracing, and then it changed forever. And then the last, mm. you know, we got promoted against Cambridge, and everyone running onto the pitch. That was the last time that ever happened. Mm. And then we we all um, the last game of the terracing. That to me, that was the last game at Upton Park. That mm. was the last. That was Upton Park proper um when it made its seat in and they made a lego set out of it it was just a tribute act to the terrace in upton mm. park if you like i mean I, I kind of there's there's people who stood on the terraces and then there's didn't and then there's the london stadium so it's the, to me there's three different west ends now i understand yeah, yeah. And, and i'm kind of like old enough miserable enough and fat enough to remember the terrace in days <laughs> so um <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. That, that, that was uh, the terracing were very special. Like those memories, mm. like bundling around Julian Dix penalties, and uh, you know the, the the last game when uh, we got relegated, and when Frank McAvenny scored a hat trick, was one. That was a special memory. Yeah, uh, and, uh, going back a bit now, you know. Yeah, so. no, no, exactly. And I mean, that's the thing. They, they, and it's quite funny. There's there's certain people when they talk to people, they have like these sort of vivid memories, not necessarily of the. Not necessarily of um, of the games, but you said, but of you know, not necessarily the hills and stuff, but the guy with the the guy with the you know the radio by yeah. his head and Bob who has two Bob reels, and you know if he has a third, everyone's going to go oh oh watch out Bob, and you knew <laughs> everyone around you, didn't you? Particularly the terrorists, yeah. and that, and that's what that's what comes across when talking to people of all ages actually is that sort of community, and people always say about you know West Ham fans are like a family, but honestly this these last sort of 40, 48 interviews I've done. You just get that sense from everyone, as you said. It's your, it's your granddad, and he took you, and there was him, and you went with your mates, and that's what I think people miss. It's not necessarily the football at the moment; it's that sense of togetherness and community. And I don't think whatever happens in behind closed doors will will replicate that. It's impossible. No, Absolutely I mean, impossible. My, my fan, my fan experience is obviously a little bit different now. I mean, yeah, I got three little kids, so I'm not a supporters group out here. No. Um, so I've got three little, three little ones. I get up when the game's on. They'll get up. I put their shirts on the night before. <laughs> and they'll come down and they'll sit there. My eldest will watch it for about 15 minutes. Yeah. And then the, the two younger ones, they'll watch it. Then there's the obligatory argument over can the game be on or Disney Junior be on. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I'll give them tablets each and they yeah, sit exactly. there and watch it. they've got their shirts on yeah. and if they score they, they'll look up and all yeah. but they understand it's where dad comes from and it's where nan comes from yeah exactly so that's lovely they understand that but we had a we had the West Ham Way USA event yeah um, early in the season Dave and X come over we had Jonathan yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice guys. love you guys and we had we had 85 people from people come over from England for it all yeah. over America uh, Los Angeles Hammers come in yeah um it was great, but you know, you look at it now. Everyone was in this. We was in this bar. 
blondies in on in on the, the Vegas Strip. Superb. We had a movie theatre size screen. When we scored, everyone's jumping all over each other. Yeah. Every every photo you've got of the event, someone's got their arm around each other. They're all like <laughs> headlocking each other. You can't do that in a social distancing thing. So no, we're going to host host another one this this year, and it's looking doubtful. Yeah. Unless something happens, but yeah, I mean. I kind of like still, I get a WhatsApp group from my mates. They still go to the games and yeah. you got like, if they win, they love the stadium. If they lose and it's insane. all the it, stadiums fall. It's the it same is, narrative is, from everybody. West, it, yeah, but that's always the way, isn't it? And that's always the way, you yeah, know, it's, yeah, yeah, and everyone yeah. has, you know, um, yeah, I know people, you know, obviously, yeah, from a neutral perspective, so to speak, you know, you know, people love, obviously loved Upton Park, but you know, we, we we didn't play great for a lot a lot of lot of my life there, you know, and yeah, the fans were up against, and if you and it, yeah, it was hostile and stuff like that. But as you said, if the team play well, then everyone, you know, as you said, like that last season at Upton Park, you know, the team played fantastically. Everyone loved the stadium, you know. And as you said, you yeah. know, people people start playing a few good games together at London Stadium. Everyone loves the stadium. As soon as it fucks up again, right, that's it. It's the stadium's fault. Okay, yeah, okay, it makes. I mean, my. my... My thing was, I, I couldn't wait to move. I thought me neither. Park was, me neither. I thought it was cursed. Mm. I honestly did, and I was up for moving when Michael Tabor suggested it in the mid nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Eggy was on about because he wanted to move it down by Canning Town to like yeah. near there. Yeah, and yeah. then Eggy and the Icelandics wanted to go to the old the post office the site in West Ham. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then um, the Olympic Stadium come up. I mean, I still think moving is was the best thing. Me too. I all, but I also think that a botch job is unacceptable. No, yeah. And yeah, I've yeah, always, yeah. I've always said that when I own West Ham, and it will happen one day. <laughs> well, you you hit the jackpot in the last year. That's what it's going to do. There you go, man. I, if I, I, all I do is keep pushing that thing, <laughs> and it will come up one day. And um, but I, I, I always say that there's there's so much potential on that site. Yeah. For the transport links, you just have to make a few tweaks. I mean, yeah. tweaks that will probably cost three, four hundred million pounds. But if if you do it, then you could have all the revenue on site. You've got a massive plot of land and everything mm. else. So I always sort of keep one eye on Trip Smith, the mm. the small American owner. Yeah. He could buy his company could buy West Ham for for the change he finds in his jeans on a night mm. out on the piss. <laughs> so I, I hope there's something there because they buy the land in Vegas and they rent it back to the casinos and the land. Wow. They're the smart people because yeah. the land they own has got water underneath it. Yeah, and then when you're in the hottest place on earth, yeah, water's yeah, the yeah, corner yeah, of the yeah, kingdom. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, yeah, I, I hope that. But you know, oh, I, 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 I say moving was the best thing. In my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. The old place was falling apart, and you know, although yeah. the, it was the whole glamour around it, the fact was, you know, the area was 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 deprived. You know, it wasn't, you know, and also, you know, that district line. If that was buggered up, you are getting out of that. Oh yeah, Park. it's awful. And it's like, yeah. you know, and, 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 but, you know, as you said, things, you never know what's going to happen. You know, you never know what's going to happen with the stadium or anything else. So, you know, I, I think, you know, we, it, it was, it was right. And for people who, uh, the youngster, your, your kids, my daughter, they're going to know West Ham playing in, in the London stadium, you yeah. know, not necessarily. Totally. Park. So it's, it's, it is for the newer generation, basically. I mean, my mom's best mate, a Millwall season ticket holder. Hey, that they've been there 20 years yeah. at the new den. And yeah. he's got two kids. They don't know the old day and they don't know the cold blown lane in. All they know is the new place. The new place and yeah. to them, it's Millwall. Yeah. So, I mean, in time, it will become you it know, will. West Ham. You know, yeah. so. It will. It will. And, and, it, and it's the same with, like, with, with, with you know, players and stuff. Like, it's the same thing, you know, for, you know, for, for my job. Obviously, I wasn't around to see, so, you know, Bobby play or to be honest wasn't yeah. to really see Billy play you know so you know that's the whole idea of the channel is getting or recording these memories and people's stories yeah. of certain players so they're sort of there for the YouTube generation you know when they want to do a bit of yeah. a bit of because everyone knows about the legends of you know Bobby and even to earlier you know for some people in sort of you know teenagers see people like julian Dix and people like that I and mean, you know so it's nice to do that so um that's the whole yeah, idea totally. around the around the, the channel itself so so for you john for your 11 um you know as i said we have we have a few rules we like to keep it to a 442 if we can um yeah i've only, done that good man 
Yeah, so I mean, you know, on lockdown, I get a little bit better at video editing, but like I've got I've got a template all sorted for four four two. So yeah, 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 yeah. As I said, I never knew what a left half was until I started doing this channel. Um, and some of the older fans, I apparently are, was a left half. Oh, were you? Yeah, I was oh, a left yeah. half. My granddad said to me, "I play left half," which apparently is the left half, left side of centre defence. Oh. Which would be Diop or Bow the Wayne, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Left and center. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So learning all these great things. Um, but the, the main rule is you have to be alive to have seen them play. That's the only yeah, main totally. rule. Really, right? I agree. I so, agree. so in terms of your team, John, who would be you know who would be between the sticks for you? Uh, it's it, it's longevity for who I saw, and yep. it's, I'll, I'd have to put Ludo in, yep. and the um. From where I stood on the North Bank, this tall, skinny Czechoslovakian. Yeah. And I, I always, a lot, to my best 11, I always try and think, right, okay, what did they do on the pitch? Because mm. I, there's always a rosy memory of the, the guy showing up at you know, events and in the press talking nice about West Ham, which is yeah, always yeah. great to see. Yeah. But um, Ludo got the club. And mm. I always remember. We're doing Ludo, what's the score? Ludo, Ludo, and his his big long fingers used to come up from from his goalkeeping gloves like this, and it was, <laughs> so yeah, it's Ludo for me. Couldn't be anyone else really. Yeah. If it was, it would be Parks maybe. Yeah. But we've always we've been fortunate with goalkeepers. We've done so. well. We have done well. You know, even yeah. after after Ludo, you got to think. You know, we had. You know, there's occasionally we might have a. a a slightly off one, so to speak. But, you know, in my yeah. lifetime, obviously Ludo and, you know, I was a big fan of Shaka, um, yeah. Rob Green, David, David James, James yeah. you know, Joe Hart. Tom McAllister, do you remember him? Who's that? Tom McAllister. No, I don't do remember Tom. Him? No, no. He was, he was post-Parks pre-Ludo. Oh, okay. that was before my time. That was before my yeah, time. Yeah, abs- absolute superhuman effort against Liverpool at oh, Anfield when we drew nil-nil and, it, yeah, um, and, um, yeah, I, I don't know what happened to him. He was like fantastic, then he just went away. But really? yeah, I think it was like a, one or two seasons. Yeah, he was. He was. But great. you get but that. No, no, no one remembers him. No you one remembers. Get that with West Ham, though, don't you? It's like I can't remember who I was yeah. talking to. Another another guy, another guest, and he sort of picked players who had like who were like one match wonders, and it was like yeah. like Jonathan Spector. You know, you mentioned John, like Jonathan Spector. Like I can't remember anything to do with his West Ham career apart from Man United the cup game. That's the only thing I can read. says the same thing. Exactly. (laughs) And I think it's so true. And like Ludo, when he played out of his skin against Man United at home, you know, that that one game epitomised, they just have like a well-beating game. And it's like, where the the fuck were you? You know, but for John, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, so put Lupe, Lupe Ludo is my grand juice to call him. We'll put him in in goal. It's a nice start. Let's go left back. John, who we got left back for you? Uh, I, I think it's a unanimous, it's got to be Julian Dix. Yeah. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, for me, a lot of a lot of the time that Julian paid for West Ham were dark times. Yeah. And he was West Ham for a lot of the mm. time, you know, and in one season he was top scorer. Yeah. yeah. I remember and but those days of bundling around when he scored a penalty on the North Bank and the you know, the the when we were really in the shit and it was two all against Tottenham and he scored that penalty. Uh, no, I see. I had a similar view in the Bobby Lower than I had in the North Bank. So, though I, I've always been, I was known to wince at a Julian Dix shot because it was all most of the time coming straight at me behind the goal. And, um, but yeah, I, when we re signed him for Liverpool, I shaved all my hair off. My mum went mental. <laughs> and um, just a tribute to Julian, it looked ridiculous, but like, um, and, but my, my vivid Julian Dix memory was, um, my, uh, we went on a cruise, a Mediterranean cruise, and before we went, I got the the Premier League was the first. It was the first season I started doing all the names on the back. Yeah, yeah. So I had three and dicks, like most people did, and um, the three dicks people used to call me. And um, but they, uh, we went on this cruise. And we were away for a week, and there was no obviously Facebook or Twitter or anything like that back then. And then we got off the boat. And it was two guys in a Manchester United shirt walking towards me. They were getting on as we were getting off. And he said, oh, did you hear about Julian Dix? He's signed for Liverpool. And I was, I was, so, I was so upset. 
and I still kept the shirt, and it was valid for when he came back. So it was yeah. all good. But yeah, that was that's, yeah, J- Julian. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've been reluctant to put players on the back of my shirt since then. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's weird, isn't it? It's like it is. Uh, some, yeah. I mean, I think the last person I someone asked me a question: Who was the last person I had on the back of my shirt? And I had to think about it, and I, I think it was Neil Ruddock. Really? <laughs> so really, I had this like obsession with Neil Ruddock when I was because uh, I was like, yeah, I'm a stocky sort of like I used to play sort of not like right back or whatever but I used to love him because he was just didn't give a shit and it was like it was part of the reason but yeah I'd uh it was John Monker and then I the last one was it was was Neil Ruddock so yeah I'll keep yeah, I'd pass number yeah. 10 with the old uh no sponsor one yeah and then um they had that and then uh they sold him after that and then I uh the the, the worst one though I, this one won't get any more players on the back of my shirt because I got a, a brand new shirt for the event and I had Balba Wainer and four on the back because I was a centre half. Yeah. As soon as I put him on the back, he turned shit. So <laughs> I, I, apolo- <laughs> I apologise to Fabian Babio and that is all my fault. I'll, I'll burn the shirt if it, make, if it helps like out. Like an effigy, <laughs> like, you know, like, like, a, yeah, yeah. like those voodoo dolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Curse burn me. the curse. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, uh, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, it was a... Uh, but it's funny, isn't it? When you say, like, when you said that shirt, like the the Hartson shirt with no sponsor, that the only person I think about in that shirt is John Hartson. It's really weird. There's yeah, like certain yeah. people in shirts you think, like, like uh, you know the one that that um, it was a recent one. I think it's a couple of seasons ago. But I, all I can think of when when someone when I put it on is Yao Mario. Although he only played for like a little time for us. That yeah, season. yeah, that, yeah. That, it's weird how you have that association with people in their shirts. Um, it's like it's like with the um, I, I mean I started supporting West Ham not I um, no, didn't support I started going to West Ham about 92, 90 so the season we went up so you know I was a glory hunter and um, and sort of the the white and the white and blue sort of yeah. stripes with the Dagenham Motors. All I can think of is Ian Bishop. That's yeah, not, I, Ian Bishop. Yeah, I associate that. Yeah, it's really funny. It's always a, yeah, it's a strange one. So it seems to me the most photographed player. Yeah, because he would have been captain. So obviously, like he, he would have him. Yeah, I remember and re, uh, and randomly Keith Rowland in that shirt because he was <laughs> he he wore the long sleeve one. Yeah, I don't know why I always think and Pete, him and Peter Butler, those three. Those, yeah. That's who I associate. With well, I remember, shirt, so. I remember going to like this is how long it was ago when when they were and how how the games changed. You used to have to do like a Junior Hammer's birthday parties at, at the ground, the little room next door to it, where they, I think it was a school. Um, they used to hire it out, and you could uh, have a Junior Hammer's party, and you get like twenty of your mates, and a player would turn up. And it's like it was Peter Butler turned up to my birthday, my brother's birthday party. You're thinking, you thinking well, that wouldn't happen nowadays? You know, you, you're, no, you're down no. like Al's Adventure House, and uh, you know Sebastian Haller turns up. It's like that never ha- wasn't happened now, does it? <laughs> but yeah. It was so funny. And also, like, the other shirt I always remember is Julian's shirt when he came back because, obviously, he ripped the collar, didn't he? And yeah. everyone had the ripped collar. And, like, there must have been, like your, like your mum when you shaved your head. Yeah. A lot of people shaved their head, ripped the collar, and it's like, it's a brand new shirt, son. You know, you just ripped the collar. But, 40 um, quid, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah 40 quid. You remember when that shirt was 40 quid? Oh, dear. Nowadays. Mm. Right, okay, we'll put, uh, we'll put Dixie left back. Who should we have uh, right back then, John, on the other side? Uh, for me, Alvin Martin. Yep. Always solid. Loved the club. You know, 80 FA Cup winner, 85, 86 stalwart. Continued the goodwill with the club. And, you know, when, when David was in goal at Stanford Bridge, it was, you know, you, you can see what it meant to have his son play for West Ham. So, yeah, I was, uh, I was going, I'll go with Alfie Martin. Yeah, good chap. Mr. West Ham, as you said. And, uh, yeah, lovely bloke. Uh, okay, we we put Alvin in. We hope to have, hopefully we'll get Alvin on the channel. So we had Tony Gale the other day, um, so we we'll, oh, we'll get yeah. It was it's, it's just it's just gone up. If you want to watch that today, uh, yeah, and, well, yeah. and, and David Cross, I did a double double player one today. That gives a that gives everyone an idea of when uh, when we've recorded this now. So I've got to get it out yeah, quite yeah, sharpish yeah. now. Thanks, John. Uh, right, okay. So uh, we put Mark Alvin in. Who's who's your who's your centre back? Who are you having in defence? Uh, Billy Bonds. Yeah, Bonzo. Yeah, um, I mean. I can't say anything about him. There's nothing really been said, but I will always just, I don't know. I, I, I kind of like, it was someone you wanted to emulate a little bit. And yeah. my granddad, my granddad always had a saying that you used to hear people shouting crap from the terraces about players. And 
I remember one time my granddad telling me, there's a reason why that guy pays to get into Upton Park and the guy on the pitch get pays to go to Upton Park. Yeah. Mm. And he said, always remember, John Lyle picked that team. So if you think he's crap, you think John Lyle's decision's crap. And I was like, I always thought about that. You know, there's always a decision made to why this stuff's happening, even like in my professional life. You think to yourself, well, someone's decided to do that. So it's, you know, my bright God. minds in mine most of the time. But yeah, I mean, I watched the 80 Cup final on the, on the anniversary day on YouTube. Yeah. Just because it was, was my first childhood memory. Don't remember anything about the actual ins and outs of the game, but... No. Bonds just never stopped running. And yeah. it's like, I, the, the, the commentary I watched was Brian Moore and Brian Clough, not the BBC, uh, yeah, John yeah. Motson and uh, Jimmy Hill. And I've watched both versions, but Brian Clough just kept complimenting Billy Bonds. And you think, if, you, if that, that is one of the finest football brains that's ever mm. been involved in football, it was always so complimentary about Billy Bonds. Say, oh, he doesn't stop running. just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. And he was in his early 30s at the time. Yeah. And you see him, 85th minute, bombing along down the back. It's just brilliant to watch. And, um, you know, he, uh, he sort of, when he became manager, he, was, he, was re- he seemed to be a reluctant manager. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. And... But, you know, did the job and you can say what you want about the color, current like, ownership, like Gold, Sullivan and Brady. I mean, everyone's got an opinion about him. One thing I will say, they made it right with Billy Bonds. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, whether Billy has been made right, you'd have to ask Billy Bonds. But to me, if Billy Bonds is somehow linked to West Ham, name on the stadium, you know, he, he shows up for the odd game. To me, the old spirit of West Ham is still there somewhere. Yeah, no, I agree. And the owners deserve credit for that. In my yeah, opinion. no, I, I agree totally. I agree totally, as you said. Um, it was a very emotional day that day. Um, and a man who doesn't show, no, didn't show any emotions really on the pitch as a manager. Like, you know, like, you know, he wouldn't cry. I've never seen, you know, he wouldn't think Billy Bonds could cry, you know. And then he was yeah, absolutely yeah. in floods of tears. And it was just a, a really emotional day. And obviously... You know, obviously Alvin doing the presenting as well, presenting the yeah. stand, and it was just a lovely day, uh, a lovely thing to do. Right, okay. Uh, and who's who's your last? Who's your last one in defence then? Uh, and another one from the uh, nineteen eighty cup final and the eighty five eighty six season. Ray Stewart. Yeah. Another outsider, embodied West Ham, loved West Ham. You know, still, you know, you see him pop pops up here and there. Yeah, he does. On promotional stuff. He'll be my penalty taker as well. <laughs> he had ice in his veins, that guy. Like, yeah. But He's yeah, great guy. great defender. And the funny thing is, right backs, we've not been that well blessed. No, but, you know, no, no, no. Right no. with Tom Carr. Like, mm. So, yeah, so it raced you up for me. Yeah, definitely. As you said, he, he still turns up and, and you still can't understand a word he says, but um, but yeah, yeah. No, he's a lovely guy. Right, okay, that's that's a very solid back five, that's for sure. Right, okay, let's go into midfield then. John, who's we going to have on the on the left wing? Well, to me, there can't be any other choice. Now, whether he was a left midfielder or not, <laughs> he's up for debate. Yeah. But on his two, two most famous goals that he's been involved with, one he scored, one he set up, he cut in from the left. So I'm putting him on the left. The, obviously, the 85 set up for the crossed yeah. over for Trevor Brookin, and then he got crossed back in. He did the jinking run and yeah. away to Stanford Bridge, 85, 86. It's got yeah. to be Alan Devonshire. Yeah. The one true genius of football. <laughs> yeah, very much so. The, the the bargain of all time, I think. Oh, in amazing. Of... I mean, I don't know. How he, even had, how he was able to play with that surgery he had. It was a, you Incredible, know, isn't he it? fused his knee and it didn't seem to affect him too much. But yeah, I mean... Uh, Someone who sort of drifted away from the game, someone so gifted, but just didn't really do much after he finished playing, you know, mm. which is a shame. But I, I saw him at the old club shop in the old West End. Um, I don't know, about five years before I moved out here. And it's really weird that I've, I've never come across anyone that is so unrecognisable today than he was. No, exactly. Days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was sat at his table. No one knew who he was. And I walked up to him and said, yeah, mate, are you Alan Devonshire? And he went, oh, yeah, finally. So I was like, sat chatting to him for a little bit because no one else was nah. chatting to him. You're right, weird, yeah. You know? You're totally right. He looks so different, you know, because obviously he had, yeah. he had the hair and the, you know, now yeah. he's like 
ball. He's got you know, great hair. Rake, yeah. yeah, exactly. No, he's uh, yeah, I know what you mean. But as you said, yeah, what I, what I like as well is is when when a player is recognised by his peers, and you know, every time you do we do an eighty five eight boys of eighty six, you know, I know piece on you know to camera at half time or whatever they all talk about dev to a man you know like and yeah. and that means a lot more so to speak than, than the fans than the fans opinion because obviously yeah. these guys there's training from day in day out we only see them for an hour and a half every saturday so you know it, it's it, it's what they say because they're obviously training them all, all the time but yeah devs in he just said five grand for a player like that that's amazing Absolutely yeah. amazing player. Okay, we'll put Devil. Let's let's go to the other wing. Let's go to the right wing. Who've you got in the right wing then, John? Uh, I'm going for some sort of a bit further the generation. I've got a lot of I remember when in there, but um, Trevor Sinclair. Yeah. But, um, another, another kind of like modern, in, in my opinion, probably a modern day Alan Devonshire bargain. Harry yeah. Redknapp, you yeah. know, waved his wand. He was going nowhere at QPR. I kind of thought, oh God, what's, you know, he's just got some. You know, he's going to be a bit part player. He's probably shot. And, um, yeah, he was superb. Absolutely was. superb. And, um, yeah, I, I was glad he got his chance in the O2 World Cup. You know, yeah. he got called up as a, a late sub. But he got, he got a game and everything else. I think he should have done more for him. And if Beckham had been in his way and a few others, maybe he would have. But, yeah, I, I had a lot of time for Sinclair. Yeah. When, every time he got the ball, you knew it was going to go forward with pace and something yeah. might happen. And yeah, and he was he, just he was a great player. I mean, yeah, he was. I mean, the thing about Trevor is like, you know, he was, he was like, he was so skillful, but he had that ability, which, to be honest, in the game, I, I think it's lost. Is he's just knocking it past the fullback and running, yeah, you know, on the right wing. You're not cutting inside. Yeah. Everyone bloody cuts in. It doesn't brain in. They put left and wingers on the right. Not, that was man. They put left wingers on the right, right wingers on the left, and just to cut. Oh, it so winds much. me up. So, it's just over complicated all the time. I mean, is. he um, all he did was put his head down. I mean, he was obviously very skillful, but yeah. obviously, like he kept, he knew what his strengths were and kept to it, and that was that was him. And yeah, it was uh, you know, the goal he got scored against Tottenham, like yeah. start start the second half, it head down, head down, look up, boom, and it went. It was mm. just that simple, and. Yeah. Um, I, I think a lot of that's gone from the game. Everyone's trying to sort of you know, get on the highlight reel. Ticky tacky, yeah. Right. No, doing you're totally right. Uh, doing, doing the same thing, you know. And it's that sort of generation because I mean, you had like Sinclair, you had even, you know, obviously you had some like Matty Effington on the left who would do yeah, that a lot. Yeah. Even before that, like, like laser, you know, the old laser and Matty Rush and the rock, you know, you have like proper yeah. wingers. And as you said, that, that's, it's, I can see like some like parallels with Sinclair to someone like Antonio because he would just put his head down. And when, when he's on yeah. his game, he puts his head down and he scares the shit out of any, any fullback. Yeah, yeah. Just, just goes so, for it. Exactly. And it just, that's the, it's, it's the West Ham way, isn't it? Head down and go for it. Um, rather than just trying to be all ticky tacky. Right. Okay. Put Sinclair on the right wing. Let's go centre mid. Who's your first sentiment then, John? Uh, to me, it's another outsider uh, that came in um, after John, the John Lyle era. I mean, the very short Lou Macari era did yield some very good it players. Did. It did. And it's, it, uh, it was a little bit of a shame it ended the way it would because he was he built a stem of the side that lasted years. Um, Captain, silky, beautiful long hair that, you know, the two of us would probably be proud of these days on which we can be be a bishop for me. Yeah, bishop bosh. He's always around Twitter as well, speaking highly of the the club. Yeah, he's coming on the channel soon. uh, We have him on the channel soon as well. Oh, great. Yeah, Yeah, bishop is a lovely guy. Yeah, he's always a, yeah, but I was a big massive fan of Bishop. Yeah. Very, very classy player. Yes, exactly. And I and as I said before on the channel, he when when like we used to have uh when the like the kids TV shows, they used to do like prank shows, didn't they? Where like people used to just like it'd be a kid in a classroom and then a presenter would, would come in and, and, and Bish did did one at our school for my it was I don't know how my brother got involved. Oh, right. But yeah, so and like was with a, a guy, a, a big called Dave Benson Phillips, this big black guy. He said, "Get get your own back on TV and stuff like that." And he did it, and he was and Bish was so nice. He was so lovely afterwards. You know, we played, we had a kick about, and you know, and it was just. And ever since then, I've you know, I, I, he was my hero when I was a youngster. Anyway, yeah, uh, and even more so because they, they never say meet your heroes, do they? But he was just lovely, and yeah, as you said, he's still has any time for anyone you know you know when 
anything to do with West Ham or about Bish, you know, he always retweets it or likes it. And it's things like that make a big impact on people, you know, particularly yeah. now when there's not much interaction going, it means a lot to people are being liked. Well, the retweet or follow back or comment, on it's like a modern day autograph now. Exactly, it so, is, it is. Yeah, it yeah, is. yeah, yeah. It is, but yeah, no, big shout. No, I love Bish. Okay, that's a great one. John, who's going who's gonna to partner Bish in the middle then? Now, I reckon if you did 5,000 of these shows, not one person is going to say this name. <laughs> Go on, Okay, then. I'm just going to come out and say it, and I'm going to say why afterwards. Straight away, yeah. Paul, Paul Ince. Okay. But look at his face. Look at his face. <laughs> now, my opinion... My yeah. opinion, Paul Ince was one of the finest West Ham players ever to wear the West Ham shirt. He was West Ham through and through. He was so good, so quick, so hard. Obviously, he had a massive opinion of himself, but if you were that good, you're no problem. Yeah, yeah. And I think the crying shame of why of, of everything that went on with that transfer is that we never replaced him until we got Declan Rice. It's taken us that long to replace Paul mm. Ince. Mm. And, I mean, to see how good he was, or he could have been for a West Ham, I mean, we, we wouldn't, he would never have filled his full potential at West Ham. No. But if you go onto YouTube and you type in Paul Ince into Milan and you see the highlights of those two seasons, he was absolutely phenomenal. Mm. Mm. And I met him once, and they say never meet your heroes. Now, there's two parts of this story. The first, <laughs> first part, I would agree with you because I'm, I'm in advertising and I've always been very fortunate to start get to corporate events, like launches yeah. and stuff. And um, the, you get these like has been players show up to these yeah. different things. The worst one's Jeff Hurst, but that's another story. But um, Paul Lynch showed up and it was a talk sport thing to do with England. So, He's been sort of introduced around to like, and I was one of the biggest spenders in the room of ad, ad budget with Talk Sports. So, and the girl there basically had no idea of the bad blood between West Ham and Paul Ince. And she went, Oh, this is John. He's one of our biggest clients. Massive West Ham support. <laughs> Didn't he used to play for West Ham? And his face, like, it was just like, Someone had just gone, slapped him in the face, just walked yeah. up, and he was just like, oh. and I said, oh, how are you doing? I said, I was a massive fan of yours. I said, I was so upset that you left. And he kind of just went, oh, like, sort of, yeah, and then yeah. it was moved on to the next one. So, I don't know, about an hour later, I'm at the bar, tap on the shoulder, Paul Ince. And he went, oh, sorry about it earlier. Um, I said, oh, it's all good. And I said, oh, you know, I was say, I was really sad you left, and, you know, and... I used to follow the England football team away. So I always to cheer you in some respect. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, he said, you know what? I'm, I, I was sad to leave West Ham at the time. You know, they, they, I was, you know, John Lyle was like a father figure to me. And he kind of opened up a little bit. And I said to him, like, you know, what was it like being booed? He goes, it was awful being booed by mm. your own people. Mm. And um, he said, I did what I did. And... I was badly advised. He said, it's no excuse. And um, he said, that game I come back for when I equalised at 2-0, he said, I feared for my life. But he said, it reminded me what the West Ham supporters were about. And But yeah, we had a chat for about like 15, 20 minutes. I said, so I, I used to follow you when you played for Inter Milan on Channel 4. And he was like, oh, yeah, I loved it there. And he was, uh, once you actually sort of got yeah. over the hump over yeah, me a little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. it opened up. But he's West Ham through and through, and he was so good. And I, I was always upset that he left. But yeah, he uh, he's my controversial one in there. And, no, uh, he inspired. I was like, what he did afterwards, that's, 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 to me, it's irrelevant. When he was in a West Ham shirt, he was fantastic. But apart from that Stoke game, when he was obviously on, you know, it was a bit of a problem. But, um, but yeah, but that's that game, uh, Villa Park, I think it was, where he was, you know, took the ball from the halfway line and boom. Like, Brilliant, absolutely yeah. brilliant. And uh, it, when we beat Liverpool in the League Cup, from Liverpool were pretty invincible at the time. He was outstanding, you know. Mm. So, but yeah, yeah, I don't think you hear that one too often. But <laughs> no, no, I think, and I, 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 to your credit, John, I think it's the first time he's come up in forty. Yeah, think... yeah in for, not not in discussion because people have, have said discussion, but I think no one's no one. Yeah, you know, they said, oh, I might put either Ian Bishop or. 
or Paul Lintz, I think I'll put Ian Bishop. You know, no, no one's gone for you at conviction that you've had there, John. So, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, power be, to you. Be a man about it. That's what I yeah, say. Yeah, be a man. He's a good player. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, you know, I know it's, I know it's, it's, it's like apples and oranges, but everyone like in the modern era, so to speak, of, of fans, everyone puts bloody Pyatt in there, but they call him the snake afterwards and da 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 and da 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 and he did this and he left us horribly. And da, da, da. You know, everyone, everyone has that generational thing, but that Paul Lintz yeah. thing, as you said, it's like you, there's people who are actually there and then it just becomes the legend, doesn't it? And then it goes, it just spirals into... into well, I remember him coming back. The last time he played against West Ham was for Wolves. Yeah. And um, this is when Alan Pardew was manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sat there, and there's kids, like 11, 12 years old, boo, Judas. I said to him, do you know why we call him Judas? Yeah. Or no. why, and they were like, well, well, kind of. Didn't he do that? I'm like, no, that's not him. That's Frank Lampard. <laughs> that's so, right. You know, right. And, uh, Didn't he call us a part team? No, like, no, that was Defoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's something that stuck with him. And I, I think if West Ham could have forgiven, forgot, we would have got him back, um, certainly after he played for Liverpool. Mm. And we would have seen his twilight years when he was still good and everything else. But, you know, such is life. We didn't. Such is and life, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a shame, really. But there we are. Pure West Ham lad, pure academy you know, yeah, prospects. No, exactly. else, and I so. think that and it seems there's, there's like, when you look at the ones who are still sort of booed when they come back, they, they were all West Ham boys. Yeah. So it's Paul Lintz, we're West Ham. Lampard. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, West Ham have a very, very strange relationship with its past. Yeah. And you think like, I mean, Frank Lampard Jr., I mean, Lampard Sr., to me, is the forgotten legend of West Ham. It's very, very true. Very true. And, you know, a guy that played, he won trophies. Anyone who lifts a cup for West Ham, to me, is a West Ham legend. Yeah. And he played okay. so often. He's a local guy, Hornchurch. Yeah. If, um, Harry Redknapp brings this up about Frank Lampard Jr. Nothing, nothing, nothing meant more to Frank Lampard Jr. for most of his life than West Ham. Yeah. And I remember meeting, I don't know, I'll go to name dropping again, but I remember meeting Frank Lampard at another media thing. I do do some work, like on occasion. <laughs> but, and I said to him, so, you know, did, I'm, I'm West Ham supporter. I said, oh, you know, always, your family's always well thought of. And he, he just like, he goes, yeah, he said, I find it sort of odd that I'm booed. He said, not yeah. now, because I play for Chelsea, I expect it, but when I was playing for West Ham. Mm. And he goes, you know, he said, it's like working in a family business. Where the minute your dad gets screwed over, your uncle gets screwed over, that's it, you've got to walk away. And yeah. he said it, was, it was, became untenable. But again, I don't think he would have been Frank Lampard if he'd have stayed at West Ham. No, no, no. no. I think uh, he had to go. Ranieri saw something in him and then... Mm. I mean, he's been first name on the team sheet for the, some of the greatest managers ever to manage, and there's True. a reason why. And um, but yeah, you know, West Ham's lost again, sadly. So. Yeah, just, just it's, as you say, it's like a weird thing, and it's like you know, it's, it just yeah. seems to be everyone who's who's a West Ham boy gets you know, if they there's you know, there's a right people, there's a right way to leave, the wrong way to leave. It's it's their job, yeah. isn't it? And I think it, it's it's you yeah, know, the but same, just, yeah. It's the same as your industry. So, you know, I work in market research and, you know, people leave from one company to another. They, they move from, you know, a massive like Ipsos to, to Kantar. They, you know, it just, it's just a yeah. change of a badge, isn't it, for people? You don't see them at a meeting or a conference and start booing them. It, like, well, you know, <laughs> funny story. I did that. I left from one company to another. And then we went to the same conference because it was in the same company. And I felt a bit like the away, like a home, like like a West Ham player who's left to yeah. another club and come back to the home ground. It felt a bit weird like that. But uh, yeah. Did you get applauded like Tony Cotty or Bird? Yeah, yeah. I, got, got, I, I mean, I remember, I remember <laughs> John, I remember John Terry getting applauded at the Mark Noble testimonial. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's, it's funny when they wear a West Ham shirt, you know, things yeah. change. Perception. Another anyway, one we, should have been a West Ham. Yeah, no, I agree totally. Um, and that, that's that era. I mean, that era, what could have been, you know, sort of that era of players yeah. at the same time. Um, but, you know, hindsight's a great thing. Okay, we'll put Ince in. Let's go up front then, John. Who we got up front? Who's your first striker? Uh, Paolo Di Canio. Yep. Uh, for me, worth the season ticket alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's uh, two, two games that stick out for me for Paolo. Um, the Arsenal game, um, he turned Keown and Adams inside yeah. out all afternoon. Yeah. 
give Gamrin Pass Vieira like he wasn't there enough times, like three fantastic players. And from memory, that was the first time the opera song was sung at Upton Park. Possibly, yeah. And that goal where he skins the two of them and then put it in there, I've watched that a backwards. thousand times. Yeah, yeah I was, oh, I could see myself behind the goal. Yeah. And um, my ex, were, her brother, were Arsenal season ticket holders at the time. And I, it, we had a very strange relationship. And um, when we beat Arsenal, which wasn't very often during our relationship, it was always like, I, her brother used to take it pretty well. She wouldn't speak to me for a week. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, to me, to me, he, he, he was another one where Harry went, waved his magic wand. You know, yeah. and people thought he was shot after that business with the referee at Sheffield Wednesday. But he came and he got West Ham and still is one of us to the day. And, you know, yeah. so, but yeah, he, every time he got the ball, you, you knew something was going to happen. Excited, you know, so. yeah. yeah, he was an entertainer, wasn't he? He, said he was box office, yeah. wasn't he? he and, right. and, you know, it, it, and doesn't matter, you know, West Ham fans, you know, they love to be entertained, don't they? They love that Enigma player. They love, like, a Paolo or where anything can happen, or uh, or Joe in his heyday, or Payet. You know, they those mm. sort of enigma players. We don't yeah. play. We're not excited. You know, fans don't get it. I think that was part of the reason with when we had sort of the Allardyce era. There wasn't that sort of vast tame at sometimes. You know, but there wasn't that sort of spearheady, crazy player who could just well, we, turn a game. You know, it was quite sensible. You know, set, you know like pr- pragmatic. Well, we had that in Ravel Morrison, but you just didn't know whether he was going to be like the last <laughs> yeah. game to play. And again, that's another shame that is, you know. Yeah. But I mean, the, the away game when uh, in the cup when Paolo Di Canio scored against the you know the old Bartes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember getting a coach outside Upton Park at four thirty in the morning. I mean, well, firstly queuing up for the tickets at midnight underneath the old chicken run. Yeah. yeah. At least to sort the men from the boys. And <laughs> I, I remember getting everyone's vouchers and standing there because I live closest to the ground. Yeah. And there'd be like this subculture of people you'd see there week in, week out, just sitting there with like four pack of beer and just waiting for the ticket. How, how that system ever worked, I'll never I, know. I, no, I don't even mean, yeah. People sat in East London for the night camping out for tickets. But, but even that night, there was an optimism that somehow we would win. And even on the coach, when the co- club laid on those coaches, like four, our oh, four or five in the morning, it left, and we was on the way up there, and there was this blind optimism, and then in the ground there were so many of us, and when the goal went in, I don't think I, I, I vividly remember the referee, the ball going in, and Paolo Di Canio sort of peeling away to the fans, but no one really celebrating until the referee went goal, because like, I, I was I was expecting you know, the other flag goal, yeah, up flag, the rest yeah, of it. yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it was the most tense 20 minutes, I think, I don't know how long it was until the final whistle. It was the most tense. And we just backs to the wall. Hanu Tahini played out of his skin. He was brilliant. Like, he, he was good when he, yeah. he was good. Yeah. I was to say we never signed him pony. But nah. then then Joe Cole, I remember him sprinting off the pitch when he got substituted. Harry Redd, I was like, stop, stop. And then Ferguson <laughs> having a go at Harry Redknapp. And I've still got the newspaper cuttings from that game afterwards. Yeah. Oh, Victoria Beckham on the front page, like this, like, and uh, <laughs> funny he was. But yeah, it has to be Paolo for me. So. Yeah, it's brilliant. Who, and who would Paolo um, partner up front for you then? You My to... all-time hero, and I, I can't imagine anyone, the, I associate with West Ham, this is the first person that comes to mind, Frank McAvenny. Yeah, yeah. Like, just, you know, just a kind of fan on the field, if he was born in Romford, he would be a West Ham supporter, you know, yeah. and he, he had it all. We had this sort of strange sort of feeling that I've, I've got my chance, I'm going to take it. And he took it not only on the field, off the field. Yeah. And he was just one of us, really. And in a strange area of non-televised football, it took a yeah. while for him to get any recognition. And when he left for Celtic, you understood why, because... He was going back to his boyhood club. He wasn't leaving for Liverpool or anyone like that. No. And um, he, uh, you know, he just became one of us and still is, you know. Yeah. So, and, uh, but that, the game where his final game, 
uh, against Forest, where he scored a hat trick. Yeah, it's yeah. one of my favourite. We were relegated at the time; it was a pointless game, but he scored a hat trick, and I I'll never forget the last goal in front of the North End. Just stood there in front of us like that. We knew he was leaving. He knew that yeah. was that, and it was it was a fitting way to say bye to bye to him. And um, yeah, I'm glad I'm glad he's still around the club from time to time, yeah. you know. And, and everything else but yeah it's Frank McAvenny for me yeah exactly and, it, and it's, it's lovely because like that that era like you know the boys of 86 they're all still mates and yeah they yeah. still knock about together and it's lovely and again you know it's like it's something which doesn't happen in the modern game you know I know no. that you know it's, I just think you know if you get I don't know three years out of a player you've done well you know like you don't get that sense of people staying for like prolonged amounts of time very rarely you know the you know we said it before a bit on the channel like the 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 concepts of a testimonial is a very rare thing nowadays you know you don't get players like mark noble or or vincent company for man city he had one and jamie carragher i mean when we interviewed tony gale he said that when he was at west ham it was 10 or 11 something like that i can't remember exactly testimonial years one after each other at the club um because he had obviously his test we taught his testimonial and and like jeff pike had one da, 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 and you know at least like you don't get that anymore and 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 there's that sense of togetherness with that boys of 86 team are they still sort of well if you look at the 80 cup final team most of that team played in 85 86 so yeah. that's a six year and on most of them i think ray stewart that was his first year at 1980 uh, was his first year at upton park Mm. And but that team stayed together pretty much for six years. Yeah, we only threw in really Cotty, McAvenny, and Tony Gale. Yeah, um, and that was pretty much it. Everyone else was there before, and uh, Mark Ward. And um, but yeah, I mean, you sort of like look at back in the day, you the contract negotiations weren't like they were now. No, and the, I mean the last testimonial I went to was Julian Dix, mm. and you kind of knew that the players were getting more and more and more money, and mm. you know, but back back, you know, say when Tony Gale had his testimonial, it was like a payday, you know, it, yes. was, it, it was something that was going to see them all right for a few years, yeah. and if they were a good servant, you didn't mind them having the money. Now, it's not so much, you know. Does does a multi millionaire need my twenty five quid? You know, no. but I, I think Collins should have got something. Yeah, yeah, he's nine, weren't he? He's nine years on off, but yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, after you know, we were thinking about it the other day. It's probably after Mark. It's Cresswell. Maybe is the longest serving player after that. Yeah, I'd say possibly. Is, yeah. So yeah, but it, it's there's not many things. left from Upton Park, really. I mean, Antonio Cresswell, Antonio, yeah, Noble. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I, st- I, I think that that sort of like when those Upton Park guys go, I think that might help us move on a little bit. I don't know. Possibly, but, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a strange yeah. one, but yeah. yeah. But that's my 11. That's it, the 11. If I was going to do manager, if I was going to manager, it'd be John Lyle. But my John captain Lyle. is Billy Barnes and my penalty taker is Ray Stewart. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> John, it's been brilliant chatting to you, man. I loved it. It's been Thank really, you. really fun. Um, really appreciate the time you're taking, especially because it's, it's during your sort of, uh, about just after lunch that you're in, in Vegas at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for my wife and kids to drive back from Utah. I've got quiet right now, so oh, I'll do another couple of yeah. You know, I've got another couple of hours of work to to do, get something finished off, and then uh, oh, at least at least it's been a welcome distraction, obviously. Yes, mate. Yes, mate. <laughs> and yeah, obviously, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. Yeah, go, you go. You go, mate. You carry on. I really enjoyed the channel. I've, I've uh, you know. Oh, I've great! Thank you very much. And everything else, and uh, yeah, it's really good format. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank in, you. In, in, in one is nothing, nothing to look forward to. It's nice to look back. You know. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. Thank you very much. The whole idea, and obviously, thank you to everyone for watching. Uh, you know what to do: view, share, like. You know, watch them all. Uh, subscribe. Until the next one, it's uh, goodbye for me and John. See you later, everyone. Take care. Stay safe.